This is Uranium Spotlight on Tuesday, April 16, 2024. This week, we cover how explorers innovate to meet booming demand with new technology in the search of new discoveries. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group and their recently announced uranium discovery with joint venture partners Chemico and Orano. With continuous drilling throughout 2024 across their extensive uranium portfolio, PurePoint's potential is clear. And now your host, Chris Frostad. This week on Uranium Spotlight, we hear from a Swiss fund with their eyes on the entire uranium fuel cycle. Canaccord sizes up the pending fuel gap. Japan looks to build more reactors and they shut down. And uranium explorers find a better technology in their hunt for the next big discovery. Last week, the uranium spot price moved slightly up from $88.75 to $90 per pound U308. Trading in both the spot and long-term markets were moderate. In a recent interview with UXC President Jonathan Hines, Mr. Patrick Franz, co-founder of PFYN Capital, shared insights into the company's foray into the nuclear fuel markets and its future plans. PFYN, a Switzerland-based asset management firm, has strategically positioned itself to capitalize on the growing demand for uranium fuel amid global energy transitions. Established in 2020, PFYN Capital ventured into the nuclear sector as part of its commitment to offering alternative investment solutions. Recognizing the rising significance of nuclear energy in the context of decarbonization, PFYN saw an opportunity to contribute to sustainable energy goals while providing attractive returns for investors. Franz emphasized PFYN's unique approach, which extends beyond merely investing in physical uranium. Instead, the company aims to participate in the entire nuclear fuel cycle, from mining and trading to conversion, enrichment, and even the operation of small advanced modular reactors. By offering tailored fund compartments within its Luxembourg-based fund structure, PFYN provides investors with flexibility and choice to align with their investment objectives. Furthermore, PFYN distinguishes itself by prioritizing long-term relationships over quick returns and seeks to add value to the industry as a whole. Franz highlighted the company's commitment to bridging the gap in the nuclear fuel cycle through strategic investments and financial innovations. Looking ahead, PFYN envisions a pivotal role in the uranium market, aiming to support new mining projects, fuel recycling initiatives, and financing for nuclear infrastructure. The uranium market has been on a wild ride lately. From its surge to over $100 a pound earlier this year, after starting at $28 a pound in August of 2021, it's now taking a breather. But don't relax too much. Experts at Canaccord predict there's still plenty of room for growth. Right now, the spot price is hovering around $90 a pound. Canaccord sees it climbing another 15% this year, hitting $105 a pound. Long-term predictions are also bullish, with expectations revised upwards to reach $90 a pound this year, up from the earlier estimates of $75 to $80 a pound. Why the optimism? Well, nuclear energy is gearing up to play a critical role in the shift away from fossil fuels. It offers reliable, carbon-free power 24-7, making it a key player in the energy transition. But here's the kicker. Demand for uranium is set to soar. With plans for numerous new nuclear plants, nuclear capacity is projected to grow by 3.5% annually until 2035. That's a lot of juice, but the supply might struggle to keep up. Sure, some smaller mines have reopened, adding about 8 million pounds to the market this year. But then there's Kazataprom, the big dog in uranium production. They had to dial back their 2024 production forecast by a whopping 9 million pounds due to a shortage in sulfuric acid, a critical ingredient in mining. Plus, there have been hiccups at some of their new deposits, putting their 2025 outlook in jeopardy. Hamaco, the second largest producer, also faced production snags this year. More mines are slated to restart, potentially pushing supply up by 7% to 150 million pounds. But even with that, we're looking at a shortfall of 22 million pounds in 2024 and 16 million pounds in 2025. And it's not like we have a ton of new mines coming online anytime soon. In fact, there are only two on the horizon and they're facing delays. The big projects, they're stuck in red tape and facing hefty upfront costs. One mega mine could churn out a whopping 30 million pounds a year, but experts warn we'll need five of those to keep up with the demand over the next two decades. And that's a tall order, considering it takes over a decade to get a mine from discovery to production. But wait, there's more. 
Kazatomprom has already locked in a chunk of its supply for the next contract period with Chinese and Russian buyers, leaving Western utilities in a bind. Speaking of Russia, they're a major player in the uranium game, supplying a hefty chunk of the world's uranium fuel. With tensions high, the U.S. Senate is mulling a bill to ban Russian uranium imports in response to the conflict in Ukraine. Now, the U.S. happens to have the largest fleet of reactors worldwide. If that bill passes, reactor operators will have time to adjust, but there's a chance Russia could retaliate by cutting off uranium exports to the U.S. That would throw the market into disarray, sending prices soaring as utilities scramble to find alternatives. Japan is facing a dilemma. On one hand, there's a strong grassroots movement against nuclear power, stemming from the trauma of the Fukushima disaster. On the other, Japan has commitments to meet climate goals, which it's struggling to fulfill. The good news is Japan has been cautiously restarting its reactors with enhanced safety measures. Recent tests, like the New Year's Day earthquake, have shown these protocols are effective in preventing disasters like Fukushima. Now, TEPCO, which owns several reactors across Japan, is loading fuel into Unit 7 of the world's largest nuclear power plant. Japan aims to have 22% of its energy from nuclear power by 2030, up from the current 10%. Achieving this primarily involves restarting old reactors. However, the vice chairman of Japan's Federation of Electric Power Companies argues that new reactors are necessary to fully commit to climate action. While Japan works on bringing old reactors back online, around 22 are operable but not restarted since Fukushima, it must also consider building newer reactors to replace aging ones slated for retirement by 2050 or later. These new reactors boast enhanced safety features like computer systems that can automatically shut down the reactor during accidents or natural disasters, significantly reducing the risk of another Fukushima-like catastrophe. Japan's journey to net zero emissions is challenging. The country heavily relies on imported energy, mostly from fossil fuels, as its climate isn't conducive to widespread solar power generation. Despite the complications, nuclear power provides a steady baseload, making the path to net zero a bit easier, albeit to the discontent of many Japanese citizens. Ambient noise tomography, or ANT, is rapidly reshaping the landscape of mineral exploration, particularly in the hunt for uranium deposits. This groundbreaking technology utilizes ambient seismic noise to image subsurface structures, offering a low-impact and environmentally friendly alternative to traditional methods. ANT, a passive seismic technique, taps into natural sources like ocean wave action to detect seismic waves. By leveraging existing ambient noise, ANT creates detailed images of the Earth's subsurface, revealing certain rock types, fault lines, and other geological features with unprecedented precision. Forum Energy Metal Corp's recent ANT survey over the Tatagak anomaly has yielded remarkable results. The results of the survey announced this week identified new drill targets extending over a kilometer along the Tatagak Fault Zone in Nunavut's Aberdeen Uranium Project. Dr. Rebecca Hunter, Forum's VP of Exploration, lauds ANT as a potential game changer, enabling precise targeting of mineralization and unprecedented accuracy. ISO Energy Limited and Terra Uranium Limited have also embraced ANT in their exploration endeavors. ISO Energy's ANT surveys on its eastern Athabasca Basin properties revealed significant low-velocity responses associated with the hurricane deposit, paving the way for future drilling targets. Meanwhile, Terra Uranium's maiden exploration program in Canada's prolific Athabasca Basin leverages ANT to map the basement and overlying sediments, accelerating the discovery process. As ANT continues to gain traction in mineral exploration, its potential to revolutionize the industry is undeniable. With companies like Forum Energy, ISO Energy, and Terra Uranium leading the charge, the era of low-impact, high-precision exploration is upon us, promising exciting prospects for uncovering valuable mineral deposits while minimizing environmental disruption. And that wraps up your Uranium Spotlight coverage for this week. For more news and events from the world of uranium, please tune in next week to Uranium Spotlight. You've been listening to Uranium Spotlight, your weekly podcast dedicated to delivering the latest news and events shaping the uranium fuel market and its critical role in the global energy landscape. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group. PurePoint actively operates a portfolio of advanced uranium projects in the world's richest uranium district and has established partnerships with some of the largest uranium suppliers worldwide. 
While our passion for this subject is undeniable, it's essential to clarify that the information presented here is not investment advice. Instead, our goal is to offer an unbiased and comprehensive review of recent events that could impact uranium prices. Join us again next Tuesday for Uranium Spotlight.